I'm Parker Jovis, and I and my two teammates are paranormal investigators. I know that you have heard stories about another paranormal investigator called Harrison on this channel, but today I am about to tell you the stories of my team's paranormal investigation. We are a team of three, myself, Sarah our psychic, and Andrew our cameraman. We too, like Harrison, investigate haunted locations and help people facing paranormal incidents. Last summer, we investigated a haunted Starbucks. I know you must be thinking, of all the places, a haunted Starbucks? But yeah, it was the most interesting and one of the most challenging cases we have faced. So this was Starbucks in a mall. And I know you must be thinking, how could a Starbucks in a mall be haunted? Aren't there people like this all the time? Well, that's what makes this case so special. The first incident was reported by a barista named Kelly. She was closing up the cafe when she heard a noise in the back room. When she checked, she saw one of the employees going through their pantry. She tried to tell her colleague that she was closing up, so he needed to leave. But this colleague continued to go through the pantry. However, when she looked to the left, there was no reflection of this colleague in the metal door of the fridge. Kelly freaked and reported the incident to the manager and their staff members. No one believed her. However, when similar incidents started happening with other staff members, the manager took note of the incidents and decided to contact us. Now, after listening to the experiences of the staff, we stepped in and decided to conduct our investigation at night when the mall shuts down. The first thing we did when we entered the Starbucks, we shut the doors and locked ourselves inside. We set up night vision and thermal cameras all over. Then we finally began our investigation. We decided to spread out and try to detect any EMF, electromagnetic field changes with the use of our devices. Now, let me tell you, this Starbucks was huge. It had almost 25 tables and a big counter to take people's orders and serve them. As we split up, Sarah went into the farthest corner. I stayed near the door and Andrew went behind the counter and the back rooms. For an hour or so, there was no activity at all. We were trying to communicate with the spirits by asking them questions, but we did not get any response. We almost concluded that the place wasn't haunted as we weren't able to detect anything. That's when Andrew busted out of the back door into the main cafe. He was breathless as if he had run a long marathon. He wasn't able to formulate any sentences as he gasped for air. Never in our years of practice had we seen this man so scared. What happened, Andrew? You okay? I asked. Parker, Sarah, I, I saw Parker inside. I knew for sure he was out, but I saw him standing in one of the back rooms going through the pantry. How is that possible? You might have seen the spirit, Andrew, Sarah suggested. Yes, I knew the spirit was trying to mess with me, but then it suddenly changed its shape and looked like you, Sarah. I think we are dealing with a shape-shifting spirit here. We need to be very careful. Andrew warned us all. Never had we before dealt with a shape-shifting spirit. While Andrew sat at the table and caught his breath, I and Sarah kept investigating. While I was covering the grounds for both Andrew and me now, I noticed Sarah staring into space for a while, as if she was in a haze. Sarah, what are you looking at? I asked her. Without saying anything, she just pointed in the direction of a glass wall that separated the Starbucks from the sidewalk in the mall. When I looked in that direction, I saw Sarah standing right there with a creepy smile on her face. But I knew the one pointing towards the sidewalk was real Sarah, and the one standing by the sidewalk was the shape-shifting spirit that was messing with us by taking Sarah's form. It was the weirdest thing I had ever seen. And looking at the real Sarah, shell-shocked, looking at her creepy version just out there, was the scariest shit I had to witness. I just held Sarah's hand and made her sit down beside Andrew, who was still recovering from what he had experienced. Now it was just me battling the spirit, as both of my teammates were down. Parker, I think we should give up this investigation, man. It's just too much for us to handle. We have never dealt with anything like this before, Andrew suggested. We can't give up now, Andrew. We need to see this through or else the spirit could harass the staff even more. So what are you going to do as I'm not stepping into the back rooms again? I think I may have to go in there and see for myself. 
I pulled out the cross that was hidden under my collar for so long. I started saying my prayers and entered the back rooms with my EMF device. Instantly, it started blinking, which meant the spirit was right there with me in the back room. I kept walking towards the infamous pantry, and as soon as I reached the pantry, all the refrigerator doors opened automatically. The one nearest to me hit me in the head. My EMF device slipped out of my hand and fell a few feet away, beeping to its maximum potential. I reached under my collar to grab my cross necklace. That's when I realized it was missing. Without my necklace, I felt powerless. The spirit must have sensed me. It might have felt me weaken. However, I spotted Sarah by the door. She looked concerned. Are you okay, Parker? Yeah, I'm fine, but I lost my necklace. The one with the cross on it. Instantly, a sinister smile crept on Sarah's face. I knew at that moment that this was not actually Sarah, but the spirit was manifesting as her. I walked back closer to the pantry, not knowing what to do as the spirit in the form of Sarah approached me. As closer it got, I noticed how the eyes had changed color. This was definitely not Sarah. You think you can banish me, boy? It spoke in a weird, almost robotic but manly voice. I did not answer. Instead, I started praying again. This was the only way out of this situation. Evil Sarah was almost a foot away from me when a voice from behind said, He may not be able to, but I can. I was so relieved looking at the person standing by the door. Harrison had definitely saved my life by just being there. He had my cross necklace in his hand along with some other holy objects. He started chanting prayers and I could see the spirit lose its form and its powers. I just stood there looking at the scene before my eyes. Harrison was pretty good at his job and within minutes there were only me and Harrison in the back rooms. No sign of the spirit. Harrison encouraged me to walk out with him. Sarah and Andrew were just where I had left them. I called Harrison as I had a feeling you would need help, Sarah said, and at that moment I was extremely grateful to Sarah. If she would not have acted in time, I would have died. This was the last case we took as a team of three. Therefrom, we assisted Harrison in his missions. As a 911 call taker, my primary responsibility is to take emergency calls and make sure the caller is really in distress. The extensive training they provide us helps us greatly to decide what type of help a person may need. Sometimes it's a kid, a woman, a homeless man, or an elderly person. It could be anyone, and we have to be alert all the time. I have handled many distressing calls and handled each one with care, keeping the safety and well-being of the caller at the forefront. Last night, I got a call that was probably the worst call of my life. Around midnight, I received a call. Hello, 911, what's your emergency? I said to the caller. From the other end of the phone, I heard the voice of an older man, along with heavy rainfall. Hello, my name is Stefan. Most of the time when older people call, it's usually nothing serious, often due to lack of sleep, hearing issues, bad eyesight, or medication. These people panic and call 911 even if there is no emergency. Once, I had a 92-year-old woman call 911 and say that she couldn't see with her eyes closed. Turns out, she was just out of dental surgery and was under when she called me. So, the old man named Stefan called me. I relaxed and started reciting our pre-decided script. Hey Stefan, where are you calling from? On my screen, besides, I could pinpoint his location to be a Starbucks downtown. Was he stuck there? And since when did old men start going to Starbucks? I work as a security guard at Starbucks. The one that's downtown. I'm 60 years old, and I think there's someone outside of the shop. Was this man panicking? Stefan, are you on any kind of medication? I had to make sure he was sober. No, ma'am. I'm clean. I really need you to send some cops down here. Sure, but before I contact the nearest unit, could you please tell me in detail what's going on? 
Due to my age, the manager of Starbucks lets me be inside during the night to guard the store. As usual, I was sitting by the cash counters when I saw a man standing right outside the glass window. He was still as a stone and just stared right at me. At first, I thought someone was pranking me, but soon I realized that the man was planning to break in. He had a screwdriver and some sort of other tool in his hand. By the tone and voice of Stefan, I knew this was serious. Stefan, where is the man now? Do you still have your eyes on him? Yes. He is still standing right where I spotted him. He is still staring right at me while I'm talking to you. Please, can you hurry? There was fear and urgency in his voice. So I contacted the nearest officers on patrol and asked them to get to the Starbucks as soon as possible. However, I knew I had to keep Stefan online till the cops got there, or else I was afraid the intruder may harm Stefan for ratting him out. Stefan, how long has this man been standing there? I guess for more than 25 minutes now. Do you have anything to protect yourself if he breaks in? I do have a gun in case things go south, but I haven't used it in 25 years, so I may not be the best shot. Is he still there? I'm afraid, yes. I looked at the screen beside me and saw that the cops were a few blocks away. Stefan, I want you to remain as calm as you can be. The cops are just a few blocks away. They will be there any minute. The rain was still pouring, and I could hear the thunder from the other side of the line. Stefan had handled the situation far better than anyone else. Usually, elderly people freak out if there's a break-in or robbery in the house. No wonder he was working as a security guard. A minute later, I heard the sirens through the phone. The cops are here, Stefan said. I could hear the relief in his voice. Hey, where are you going? Don't run away. Stefan, what happened? Talk to me. The intruder heard the cop cars and ran away. Do not chase after him. The officers can take care of it. It's raining. Please stay inside. I told Stefan, which he probably listened to. Yes, ma'am. The minute I heard the cops knocking at the door of the Starbucks, I disconnected the call, knowing that Stefan was in safe hands. Around four in the morning, I was done with my shift and was just about to leave when the cops who had handled the Starbucks case arrived at the station. Elizabeth, good work today. You have no idea, but you saved the man's life today. Officer Connor told me. Who are you talking about in the Starbucks case? Yeah, the old man Stefan who worked as a security guard at the Starbucks. You have no idea how much danger he was in. What do you mean? The intruder was outside. The moment we reached the Starbucks, instead of going inside, we decided to check the surrounding of the cafe. We found no one, no footprints or track marks of any vehicle. It was as if there was no intruder at all, as there were no signs of one. But the old fellow kept on insisting that the intruder was right in front of him, beyond the glass window, not more than five feet away. He said that the guy was standing in a bush and staring at him. Well, he told me the same thing. We were convinced that probably due to his age and all the rain pouring down, the old man might have seen something. But my instinct told me that something was up, so just as we were about to leave, I decided to sweep the inside of the cafe. As soon as I stepped inside and moved towards the back door that opens into the alley, I noticed wet, muddy footprints. They started right from the back door and ended just a few feet away from the cash register. This means the intruder wasn't outside. Rather, he was inside and right behind Stefan. The reflection of the intruder was getting reflected in the main window. Stefan must have thought that the man was outside when, in fact, he was inside and right behind him. The intruder must have listened to your 911 call, and so he decided to be as still as possible. Good thing you didn't hang up on him too soon. As soon as the intruder heard our car approaching, he retraced his steps and left the Starbucks through the back door. Fortunately, nothing was stolen. Perhaps because Stefan noticed the intruder before he could do anything. The old man does have bad hearing, as he didn't hear the intruder break the lock on the back door. We contacted the manager and let him know that the cafe's security was compromised. Thanks to Stefan and you, 
No one was hurt and the cafe wasn't robbed or vandalized. Knowing the fact that I had literally saved a life of a poor old man made me very proud of myself and my job. I grew up in a comparatively rich family. My dad had a successful business and my mom was a lawyer. However, my parents made it a point to raise me in a humble setting which meant I had to get a job and earn my own pocket money. Back then, I was fascinated by coffee and decided to work as a barista at Starbucks. Although I was still in high school, I loved my part-time job at the local Starbucks and the money I earned was great as well. A few months into my job, I was in my senior year of high school and a very beautiful girl showed up in Starbucks one night. She had raven black hair, piercing blue eyes and pale skin. She looked like a movie star to me. She was wearing a modest dress and ordered a simple coffee. I served the order and continued to work, but my eyes kept going toward her. She sat on the last table and just sipped at her coffee in peace. Later, when the store was about to close, she just got up, left some tips on the table, and walked away. From that day on, this girl used to come every night to the Starbucks and leave just before the store used to close. And one of my co-workers had a massive crush on her, but we did not dare talk to her. We knew that she was maybe a few years older than us, but she was stunning nonetheless. On my 18th birthday, just a few days before graduation, my parents decided to surprise me with a new car. It was nothing fancy, just a Ford Mustang. Back then, having my own car was a big deal. I took my car everywhere from then on, to school, to parties, and even to work. One day as I was cleaning the platforms just before the store was about to close, I saw the same raven-haired girl walk in. By now, I had her order by heart and placed it even before she could say it out loud. Once I had given her the coffee, I continued with my work. Sometime later, she left and I and my buddy locked up the store and left too. While I was driving home, I saw the girl just standing a block away from Starbucks. I had a nice car and, to be honest, I wanted to show it off a bit. So, I decided to ask the girl if she wanted to lift home. I slowed the car down beside her on the road and spoke. Hey, do you need a lift home? For a few seconds, she looked at me funny, and once she recognized me from the store, she smiled and said, Oh, really? Would you drop me off at home? I was 18 and a bit stupid, so I replied, Yeah, why not? Hop on in and just let me know where you live. She sat on the passenger's side and told me where she lived. Although she lived on the other side of town, I was delighted to spend some time with her. So, you still in high school? Yeah, it's my senior year. Mmm, high school is a good time in your life. You should enjoy it while you can. After that, life hits hard. I was a bit naive to understand what she meant back then, but... I was just glad that she was with me and I could get to tell all my friends the next day that I gave her a ride home. What do you do? I dared to ask. I used to go to college. Why did you leave? Because there was nothing left for me there. Her cryptic talks were a bit confusing, but I didn't mind much. What do you want to do after high school? Well, I'm planning to go to the university. I was hoping to get a sports scholarship. That's good. Get out of this stupid small town while you can. Or else, like some of us, you'll be stuck here forever. I truly was clueless about what she meant at that point, so I decided to keep quiet and drive towards her home. For the rest of the ride, she was quiet and kept on looking out of the window. When we reached the address she had told me, I got out of the car and opened the door for her. She thanked me and walked away in the direction of a small house, which was probably the only house in that block. I got in my car and started driving back home. Midway through the ride, my eyes drifted toward the passenger seat, and I saw a silk scarf lying there. Crap. Looks like she forgot her scarf. I decided to turn around and return the scarf to her. I knew where she lived anyways. After about ten minutes, I was at her doorstep, holding her scarf in one hand and knocking on the door with the other. An elderly man opened the door. He looked as if he was about 70 years old. Hello, sir. I'm Matthias, and I dropped off your daughter here tonight. I think she left her scarf in the car, and I'm here to return it to her. 
Before I could complete my sentence, an elderly woman came and stood beside the man. It was clear that the man and the woman were husband and wife, and from their facial features, I also figured out that they were related to the girl from Starbucks. They were perhaps her parents, I guess. The woman looked at me for a while and snatched the scarf from my hand and began crying into it. I was confused as to what was going on. The man, too, had tears in his eyes. I think you should come inside. Sure, sir. I was a bit hesitant at first, but eventually followed them inside. Sit here, son. The old man made me sit in his living room. The woman had disappeared somewhere in the home. How did you meet my daughter, son? The man reappeared with a cup of coffee for me. She visits the Starbucks I work at almost every night, so today I decided to drop her off here, but she forgot her scarf. Ten years back, my daughter was returning home from the Starbucks you work at, when she met with an accident. A drunk guy was behind the wheel, and we lost our only child. From that year onward, at least one of the Starbucks employees comes here claiming to have met our daughter. She is dead, son, and I don't know who you met or who you dropped off here. I agree the scarf you brought is indeed hers, but if you see her again, please do not talk or interact with her. We do not want you to get hurt. I was stunned after hearing the man's confession, and I left the place, shell-shocked. As I got back in the car to drive home, I felt as if someone was sitting in the back seat. I checked if anyone was there, but the seat was empty. I started the car and left the place. While I was on the highway, I looked in the rearview mirror, and she was sitting in the back seat. I was so terrified that I lost control of the car and crashed into the divider. Although I was in an accident, I was not hurt. I got out of my car, which was completely smashed from the front, and saw another car opposite to me. This car had crashed into a tree, too. But upon closer inspection, I noticed that the driver had passed out and was probably drunk, too. Plus, he was driving his car on the wrong side of the road. If the girl had not appeared in my rearview mirror, this guy would have crashed into me, and I would have been killed as well. Looked like the girl saved my life that night. For the next couple of days, I kept an eye out for the black-haired girl, but she never showed up in the Starbucks or anywhere else. Finally, I graduated and moved on with my life, not giving a second thought to the incident. But even now, whenever I visit my hometown, I make it a point to buy a coffee from the Starbucks I used to work in, in the hopes to meet the ghost of the beautiful, raven-haired girl again. <laughs>